Hi again, my name's Tom, I'm the Dusty Builder. Welcome back. Today we're gonna make a do-it-yourself track saw that doesn't need clamps. This track saw is gonna be just as good as the expensive professional grade track saw. I bought this from DeWalt. Um, the two tracks plus the saw was probably $800. So this do-it-yourself uh, track is gonna be just as good. We uh, devised a solution so we have padding uh, on the back of this track saw so we don't need clamps. We just set it on our workpiece and then we can make a quick and accurate cut. Stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss it. So our first step is to make the base for the track. Here I'm using half inch thick material and it's eight inches wide. This is just leftover siding from another project. So the next step is to adhere the straight edge onto the track saw. So this is gonna be the guide that the saw follows. So this has to be straight. Usually, engineered products like plywood, the factory edge, usually it's straight. Um, this happened to be straight, but if it's not straight, then that's a problem because the saw guide is gonna follow something that's not straight and we're gonna get crooked cuts. So this has to be straight. All right, so now we're gonna finish making our track saw guide. As you can see, the saw is following that straight edge and we're making a nice straight cut. All right, here we go. Time for the secret sauce. This is just a weather stripping that I found on Amazon. It was inexpensive and it, it appears to be fairly durable. I'll show a picture of it, but I also have a link in the description if you want to buy it. Um, it adhered to the back of the do-it-yourself track saw fairly well. My shop is cold. I'm doing this in December in Michigan, so my shop's cold. And so I go through and I hit it with a heat gun, and that seemed to make the adhesive, um, I guess it activated the adhesive. So um, after the heat gun, it, it stuck on there and it didn't want to come off. If you don't have access to a heat gun, a hair dryer would probably work just as well. It'd actually probably be better. The heat gun's one of those funny things where if you get carried away, it's easy to melt things. All right, let's see how we did. Let's cut a piece. So we got our foam on here. That's just so we're not, we're not cutting up this, uh, my little work piece here. So I don't know, let's cut it uh, six inches, six inches. I don't know, it's on there pretty good. It's not going anywhere. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could put another piece here. That worked pretty good. Let's try a longer cut. So I have to admit, the foam weather stripping worked really well. Now, as you can notice at the bottom there, it can get damaged, and it does have the propensity to collect sawdust. Uh, I just hit it with a shop vac, and it cleans it up, and then it'll adhere on the work surface again. Now, I had high hopes for this rubber backing. Um, there's like a similar material on the expensive track saw, and I it seems a lot more durable, but I found that it's... It's just not as sticky. It wants to slide around. So here's the DeWalt track saw. On the outside, we have the the harder rubber stripping. And on the, the middle here, we have the foam pads. And I think the foam actually does a better job of creating friction on the work surface. So in my opinion, it's the, the foam padding for the win. So there you have it. We have a very low cost, very viable alternative to the do-it-yourself track saws, expensive cousin, the DeWalt or the Makita or the Festool. Now, is this gonna replace those tools in a cabinet maker shop? Probably not. Um, I still like my DeWalt track saw. It, it has a, its time and place, but um, for just making quick straight cuts, I, I use these straight edges all the time. 
Um, and my main complaint was wasting time uh, using clamps. So uh, I believe this roll was only $10. Um, so I could make several track saws and um, you know when these get damaged, which they will, um, I'll just take them off and I'll put new ones on. And I probably will end up putting another strip on there just to increase the surface tension. So, uh, you know, to prevent this from moving while I'm making a cut. So, um, hopefully you like this video and hopefully you learned something. Um, if you don't mind, give it a like and maybe even subscribe if you like. But uh, again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.